Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to episode four of the Larger Than Life podcast. I'm Sarav. I'm Rory. Some may say I am doing a podcast with Otis from Sex Education. <laughs> <laughs> we're only a few seconds in. I know, I know, I know. It has to happen. You know what? We're going to edit. We're going to get better out at our editing. So I'm going to put a picture of Otis right here. <laughs> That's so optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me they don't look alike. <laughs> Honestly, people stop me in the streets. <laughs> Genuinely, I was at like a uh, bottomless brunch. Oh my God. And like, I was just like, drinking with my mates. Some literally woman comes up, interrupts my conversation. She says, excuse me, have you seen, uh, have you seen Sex Education? I'm like, yes, I know. I look like Otis. Now please leave me alone. No, it's put a problem. No. It's a real problem. It's man. so funny though, man. <laughs> no, because I remember what. So Sex Education came out when we were in third year of uni. So 2019, yeah, 2019. we were finishing off. And I remember it was like a... Fucking incredible series. Like, I really, really Great enjoyed it. it. Season one started so strong. And um, I remember, yeah, we just kind of like, we just looked at you and we just like, hey. <laughs> All suddenly realised, you look like Otis. <laughs> <laughs> so people say it's the mannerisms as well. Like, it sort is, of slightly, yeah. slightly awkward, slightly <laughs> jerky movements. Like, I'm just roasting myself no, at this no, point. No, trust me, trust me. But it's funny that you're getting recognised um, <laughs> for being Otis and not for the pod. The closest I'll ever get recognised yeah, for yeah. being a celeb. <laughs> yeah no fair but um now nah, so what's funny is my sister basically they got my sister she's been supporting the pod there uh she um basically messaged me being like you know like rory looks like <laughs> otis from sex education no nah, she was like rory looks like that guy from bad education and i'm just <laughs> like i don't think he looks like jack whitehall i was like who's she <laughs> so talking stretch. about and then she's like oh you know like Otis, and I'm like, okay, you mean sex education? And yes, yes, he does. And she's just like, yeah, yeah. So I'm just creasing because, like, she's got it done as well. She's like, yeah, yeah, my friend called it. My friend called it. And I'm just like, listen, firstly, your friend didn't call it. It's the most obvious fucking thing in the world. You literally look like Otis so much. That's not an original thought. Like, no, yeah. exactly. But, um, but yeah, and then she's like, you have to talk about it on the pod. And I was just like, we actually need to talk about this on the pod. Within seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do a quick interview right now for a second. So, um, Tell me, what was it like being in uh, um, sex education? Bad education. What was it like being in sex education? <laughs> <laughs> what was it like securing this? Securing the two baddest girls. That sounds like unrealistic talent. part of that show. Nah, that what do you mean? Secures, uh, <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, listen. Otis has got his own game. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's his own league of game. Of I was risk, discussing you know? this with someone at work, and I believe there is a thing that when someone is so sourceless, they have source. <laughs> Like the lack of sauce. How, how do you think I have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no, you finally realised how nah, yeah. you've got flavours. <laughs> you got flavours. You put you put sriracha on your on your egg fried rice. <laughs> Obviously, you've got to water it down with yeah. the eggs, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm going straight sriracha. <laughs> that would be absurd. <laughs> you got to give your toilet a chance. Um, Nah, man, but I nah, I don't think it's unrealistic. I think Otis has just got that. He's got that bad boy swag. He's got fit mum as well. He does. He's got a fit mum. You met her, right? I met her. Yeah, met her at the um, the Crown premiere. Fit. She like it was weird, right? She sort of we, we were having a chat. Well, I was like, well, I was having a chat with someone else, and then I sort of looked at her. And she sort of looked at me. I think she originally must have thought I was Otis. Cause she just I said, oh hello, and then she went, oh hello, and we just started chatting for a bit. It was really nice. <laughs> you must like, have you were Otis. <laughs> I, I, I thought in hindsight, I was like, oh, that's really nice. You know. Just sort of must have looked at me, and I was like, so we had a little chat, and then I thought, oh fuck, she probably just thought like, obviously not, a, man. A buzzer here, no, you know? Obviously not, man. She worked at that. That was our, you know, TV son. She's not gonna think. Yeah. You're... <laughs> nah, but listen, big up Otis. He secured me. He secured. Uh, it's true. What's her name? Ruby. Ruby. Mm. Uh, what's her name again? Is it CC? Oh, the actress is. Yeah, no, Mimi. Mimi Keen. Okay. Someone searched her up on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've sent into her DMs. <laughs> Oh, I mean, when I, yeah, when I was in third year, mate, I, because you know what? I used to like, I think we're around the same age. So even when she was on EastEnders, and I used to watch EastEnders was she back on EastEnders? in the day. Yeah, she was I on EastEnders. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she was Ian Beale's daughter. And uh, mate, even then, I remember when I was like a kid, like 14. You slid into her Facebook. No, nah, oh, I was just <laughs> like. Her on Facebook. I was just like, oh, she is pang. Like, she's so fit. Um, obviously, when I was 14 as well, um, <laughs> just to clarify. Um, but yeah, and then she came on sex education. And I was like, damn, now everyone's clocked how young yeah. she is. But I was like, I've still got to sign to her DMs. Did she reply? No, of course not. 
Not yet. One day she'll be sliding into my DMs. One day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you almost be the larger than life guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll just be like, sorry, who are you? <laughs> oh, I love how hopeful we are about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, bro, I'm, I'm confident. But no, nah, listen, she's paying, Maeve's paying. Um, that show is a great show. It's, it's a great show. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, man. You did well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, um, welcome, as I said. So if you're new here, welcome. Uh, it's just your two favourite beer drinkers back at it again. We're catching up on the week's events and we're going to be trying a new beer this time. If you're returning, thank you so much for all of your support. Honestly, it's been overwhelming and um, we promise we're going to continue to keep going, be consistent and just get better. Uh, Rory, where can they find us if they're looking for us, mate? Uh, so if you like our long form content, you want us to do the whole episode, you can find us on Spotify, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, and you can find us on YouTube. Mm. Um, and then if you've got a shorter attention span and just want to see small clips of us, yeah. you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at larger than life underscore LTL. It's as easy as that, people. So Lama, go... Tango, Lama. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's as easy as that people go find us uh go message us send us some suggestions send us any beers you want us to try literally anything you know we don't bite we don't discriminate uh we will do our best to reply to you because our dms are already quite full i'm not they're gonna popping off. they're popping off they're popping off so you know you better join this join the wave you want to you want to get on this train before it before it leaves before without you sales uh, <laughs> for the trains <laughs> we haven't well, even had a beer yet <laughs> 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 Um, I can already tell this is going to be an unhinged episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, should we get into it? Let's get into it. All right, okay. so, we, we always, as, as per, we always start off the episode of Larger Than Life mm. with our beer of the week. Indeed. So, so what have we got this Sarah, week? we've got a special one today. Have we indeed? We've got a Sierra Nevada, California mm. IPA. Wow. Uh, and then the subtitle is Citrusy. And a sessionable ale. An ale. Sessionable. Wow. It's an what IPA. What the fuck does sessionable mean? <laughs> hey, ready for the sesh? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the the certified beer of all the sesh gremlins out there. I was going to say, because it's the California IPA. Do you reckon this is what they drink at Coachella? The session? I reckon they don't even drink at Coachella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They are tame at Coachella. But for, um, um, for all of you audio listeners, this is a bright blue can. Um, it's got a picture of like the cliffs, the beach, the sea. It also says at the top, family owned, operated, and argued over. But I guess we're going to find that out. I might be wrong, but I think that might be a picture of the Californian beach. Oh, really? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, okay, so so the description for this beer is this session IPA is a is golden in colour, easy drinking, and full of citrusy and piney hop flavour. Interesting. And uh, a bit of background for this beer. <laughs> so this this beer it, i went on the website just yeah. you know, a bit of research okay. you know nice uh and it says mountain inspired ken grossman ditched the city whenever he could going off grid that's where he found thrills and life's answered climbing in the sierra nevada mountains ken's bold idea took shape build a brewery <laughs> naming it would be easy mm. so this geezer was just climbing a mountain probably in sierra nevada <laughs> 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 and they thought do you know what? They probably thought, I'm just going to make a brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looked around and he thought, I'm going to call it Sierra Nevada. What a mad, mad bloke. Mm. I rate it though. I rate that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just also, to... the thing is, why, why would climbing a mountain make you think of making a brewery? Because he was 100% tripping. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Bro, if he's out on the mountain on his ones and he hits, gets his revelation, I need to build a brewery. The guy must be an He's on something, man. He's on something. Mate, Ken but Grossman, I rate if, it. If you're listening, he's probably dead now. But yeah, Ken Grossman, yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. listening, you're a nutcase. Yeah, you're a nutcase. Um, but we literally yeah, like your beer. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's go for it. Right. Cheers, Sarah. Episode four. Episode four. First thing that hit me God. immediately was a, like a citrusy taste. Mm. And it's usually a I feel like... A little bit of lemon. Yeah, a little bit of something. Touristy, straight away. It's got a little bit of something, something to it, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm a fan. I like that. I think there's a running theme here. Every beer we've had so far, which has got citrus in it, we both unanimously like it. So, oh, oh yeah. shit, maybe I spoke too you soon. Spoke a bit too soon, mate. Uh, it's all right. I don't think it's amazing. Mm. What was that one we had the other day? The hazy, hazy, uh, oh, the no, the Ranger, 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 Ranger from the hazy two. IPA. Yeah, that was really good. Mm. That was like I a slapped. fruity one as well. Really, really cool can as well. I don't know. Like, even appearance-wise, doesn't look incredible. Um, it's a bit like... Looks a bit of shit as our logo. It's not heavy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, 
<laughs> it's it's not like um it's light, do you know what I mean? I feel like you could drink a lot of them, but yeah. you'd be fine, you know? I'm going to be burping on this episode. Yeah, like <laughs> it's going to be a proper burping yeah, yeah, yeah. episode. It's all right, okay, fine. Um, all right, should we cut to it? What, For me, you... I'm giving it a seven. What are you giving it? We'll meet in the middle. Okay, that's you. I gave Sing, Sing Tao. I've realised this is quite hard to put, like, IPAs on the same scale as, like, We've got to do it, beers man. and lagers. Yeah. Oh, this is hard because it's... I'd... All right, number that goes in your head. What's the first thing you think? Yeah, I would probably say maybe a seven as well. But then I've given Sing- I gave Centaur a six point five, mm. and it would be an injustice to rate this. Nah, I would actually. I'd rate it. I'm going to give it a seven. Give it a seven. Okay, it's I decided. do like it. Ken Grossman, we're giving you a seven. Yeah, not bad, man. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And if I'm honest, Ken Grossman, you've kind of lived our dream because people, if you're listening, we're saying this in episode four, but we've been saying this offline for a while. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to open, we're going to, uh, sorry, we're going to have our own beer one day. I love the vision, Sarah. Yeah. I love it. I love no, it. I love we're going to have our own beer because we know you guys are going to support us all the way to the top and you're going to want to get involved in the That's the end goal. Yeah. Once we get, once we manage to brew our own beer, yeah. preferably called Lager Than Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe with an underscore LTL. <laughs> maybe we we'll just call it That's underscore it. LTL or something. Or LTL. That's true. We could do that. Yeah, and then yeah. once, once we've done that, we've completed the yeah, pod. We're done. We're done. We're done. No more episodes. But listen, <laughs> yeah, support it. us so we can charter our own beer. And yeah, send it out to you guys. Honestly, yeah. you original listeners, all four of G's. you, <laughs> all four of you, uh, we will send you a free, a free crate, crate of our, yeah. of our uh, LTL bit. But now, nah, guys, uh, what's his name again? Floyd. Um, Ken Grossman. Ken Grossman. Ken Grossman. Decent bear, man. Decent bear. And probably a decent bloke. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't mind having a. Ken Grossman with Ken Grossman. We though. should reach out to Ken Grossman and get him no, on the pod. Get him on the pod. Yeah. yeah, mate. Well, listen, we'd like to interview you about your distinctly average beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, better than average. Yeah. 4.2% um, as well. Not bad. Well, look, we can talk about Ken, Ken Grossman. I think we need to get into it. Let's get into Let's it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Okay. Uh, Rory. There is something that's been popping off on social media oh. for, for, I don't know, a while now, I guess. Um, but, like, I've seen more, like, TikToks of it and stuff. Okay. And seen a lot of stuff, like, in on Twitter and... Um, I don't know, just on the gossipy news feeds and stuff. But we've got to talk about it. So I think you must know, do you know who Shauna Ray is? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah I've seen this, yeah. So for the people who don't know who Shauna Ray is, uh, basically Shauna Ray is a 26-year-old uh, woman. She had her growth stunted due to treatment she received as a child for brain cancer. Okay. Uh, so it basically, horrible. yeah, horrible stuff. And so because of the treatment, it's left her meaning that she was basically stunted for growth. So she is three foot ten and she has a very childlike appearance i think often she's kind of branded as looking like an eight-year-old wow she's um, 23 but she's 23 years old and she looks really young we'll get a picture of her up as well for mm-hmm. those of you who don't know who she is but go go look her up because it's like obviously quite interesting yeah so shauna ray is she's now got a reality tv show mm-hmm. uh, i think it's called i am shauna ray what a creative title <laughs> <laughs> don't be peak man <laughs> My God, <laughs> but uh, she's good. It's called I Am Shauna Ray, and it's all about her. And now nah, she lives an interesting life. Like obviously, it can't be easy having the appearance that she does. She must get ID'd all the time. But... <laughs> 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 Probably more than me. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, people know who you are, Otis. <laughs> hey, well, aren't you still in school? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, but yeah, so. I think she's currently like working behind a bar, which is also like what is. Wait, she's got of... she got her own show and she's still working behind a bar. Yeah, man, I was literally about nah. to say that's obviously bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah, of course, but yeah, so she was working behind a bar. But what's been popping off about her more recently is that she's found herself a fella. Okay. A man called Dan Swigarten. Apologies if I'm saying that incorrectly. Okay. He's a 26 year old man and he's begun <sighs> dating the reality star. <sighs> I'm going to put a picture of him up as well. Oh, Saraf. Because he's a 26-year-old man, and he looks like a 26-year-old man, yeah. and I think he's pretty fucking tall. Might even be over six foot. We've got, like, not really important height, but okay. he, he looks like a full-on man, you right. know? Right. And he started dating her. And obviously, obviously yeah. he's been rinsed and called a creep. You have to be. This, obviously he has. I think. Let's talk about it. This man. Mm. Okay, oh, my first reaction to this... Yeah, go for it, man. ...is this man needs to be vetted. <laughs> <laughs> Vet this man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite Check nice. his history, right? Like, because... <laughs> because if, like, if this guy's not a decent bloke, that, like, this could be problematic. So here's the thing. Yes. 
Here's the thing. Oh, I don't know. Right. No, no, no. Okay, because we're going to get into a debate on this. Check as, as his we browser do. history. I completely agree <laughs> yeah, with okay. you. So, she has, like, parents who obviously care so much about her. Mm-hmm. And I think they do... She has this genuine concern. She's a 23-year-old, and we all, you know, kind of know... She just wants to find a partner. Find a partner yeah. and date people as one does, yeah? She's lit- she's, a, she's a fully... Not fully grown physically woman, but she's a woman. She's like. mentally mature. She's mentally mature. Yeah. She's a woman. And um, so obviously she wants to date. I believe some of the concerns that she has in finding a partner and her parents have for her mm-hmm. in finding a partner is the fact that people might fetishize, fetishize her for her... Ch- <laughs> well, well, yeah, number yeah, two yeah. of the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fetish... Fetish... Bruh? Fetishize. Fetish- sounds that, weird. Is that a right? word? I think that's a word. Fetishize. Yeah, we'll, we'll run with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll trademark that. <laughs> weird thing to trademark. Not with our beer. <laughs> um, yeah, basically what you just said, that yeah. word. Um, her for her childlike appearance. Yeah. So it seems as though he has been vetted for this. And I think like they wanted, like he wanted to go away with her and her parents were a bit like, we just want to make sure he's a good guy. Like, okay. Obviously. Because on the one hand, I'm thinking, hey. He must be a good guy. Like you can see past the fact that she looks like a child. But on the other hand, is he there because she looks like a child? And one thing I found out is this man, he's from the UK actually, might have been traveling in the US, but he apparently sought her out. That doesn't sound. So it wasn't a natural meeting. Nah, it so wasn't. When you say like, saw her, what, do you, what do you mean? I think he like saw the show. I assume he's a fan of the show. I think so. I might be wrong. Okay. Okay. I might be wrong. This is something I saw on Twitter, which we all know, to be fair, is such a reputable news source and it's all true. Obviously, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is fact Everything on there. Everything is fact on there. <laughs> and um, that's how I did so well in my, like, uni essays. Quote. <laughs> <laughs> quote. That's all the Harvard referencing yeah. tweets. <laughs> Please give me an essay on utilitarianism. <laughs> Bam! 140 yeah. characters are done. Yeah, yeah, trust. <laughs> nice and simple. Nah, but um, apparently he, like, sought her out and, uh, yeah, that's how they got together. But, like, Obviously sus. Can I, can I, so listen, I'm in two minds about this. Hit me with it, bro. So on one side, I'm thinking, do you know what? Good on Shauna Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star of I am Shauna Ray, but good on her. (laughs) (laughs) Good on her because, do you know what? Who are we as the internet to deny her of finding a lifelong partner and for her to be happy? Yeah. Right? And I read somewhere that she's been approached by so many creepy guys. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure she has, right? I'm sure. So many creepy guys, right? So, you know, she's 23 years old. She probably knows who are the dodgy apples. Oh, okay. hundred, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And if this guy and if these they, they, they've if they have been on lots of dates and they've been you know dating each other for a few months now, she knows. If yeah, yeah, yeah. She needs a creep or not. And I think that's that's great. And like, well, I mean, what's the alternative, right? Is she gonna like date eight year olds? Like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, just like yeah, that's yeah. not fair, right? So I think that's really sweet and wholesome. And the other, <laughs> but then the other side of me is thinking, yeah, when you're in a relationship. And attraction in general, right? And having finding a partner, I think you can split it into two categories, right? Mm-hmm. There's the emotional connection mm. and there's the physical connection, right? Now, Dan Swigert, I believe that's his name. Whew. Is that- Stunning pronunciation. Bit of pronunciation there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dan Swigert, right, s- says, Oh, I'm you know, I really, I really I was really drawn to Shauna because of her emotional strength mm. and you know how strong she is and approached her, right? Okay, that's great, that's one side, right? Yeah. But the other half of the equation it's physical attraction, mm. right? And if they're in a loving relationship, and yes, the one side, that's all innocent. But if you take the physical attraction side of it, and he is physically attracted to her, does that not make him a nonce? Yeah, no, it does. It, it, it does, to, right? it does. She it makes is him objectively, elite. like, looks like an eight-year-old, hey. right? And if you're physically attracted to her, like, and you, let's say they, you know, have inter- intimate moments with each other, and he... And she looks like an eight-year-old. I don't know how you can do that, mate. But without without not without feeling odd. There was definitely some nonces out there who saw I am Shauna Ray pop up on their TV screen and think dream come true. Like Bro, this found is, the cheat code. Yeah, she found the cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> so <Sorry>, that's dark. <laughs> but no, for sure. So I agree. However, as the Netflix special says, love is blind. So you, really, so you don't think? Well, I didn't. I didn't necessarily so agree with that. The way I think this is permissible mm. is if, if their emotional connection and his love of her and her as a person, not fit, nothing to do with physical, completely overrides the physical, like any physical attraction. 
Hmm. And I think that's okay. But how do you quantify that? Like, how do you... You can't. Yeah. You can't. You just have, have to, to trust, trust that this guy is not a nonce, basically. Yeah. But think, yeah, ultimately, if her parents have vetted this guy, like, obviously she's got a team around her, you know, I'm, I like to think that he's not a nonce. I'm sure know? he's a good guy. Like, well, I, I don't know. It's tough, man. It's, so it's tough. tough. It's, it's tough. so tough. But like, obviously, he's defended himself, saying that she's incredibly, in, like, incredible and inspiring. Just happens to be a bit short, and she deserves to have relationships and connections she with she, whoever she wants. I think this is the other side of things that we need to look at mm. from her perspective. As you said, what is her alternative? There's literally no alternative. Like, like she, there will, will ever, otherwise, whatever she'll be plan she has, there will always be this debate of is the guy an ons? Yeah, so unless she's supposed to have someone who's got the same condition as her but then that's equally so weird that's from, like, yeah. and it's equally strange from her side then because because it's basically denying her of all these other parts yeah. isn't it but yeah. then also it's like just because she looks young let's say she found a partner who had the similar sort of kind of situation that she was mm. in and she was attracted to that partner but he looks young so then doesn't that make her a bit of a nonce whoa that's do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see that. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. There actually is no alternative for her except mm. to find a partner. I think like, if you have a disability, you shouldn't, you, at the end of the day, you're not just going to be attracted to people with the same disability. No, nah, of course not. Do you no, know what I mean? So like, of course not. I think, yeah, she has every right to um, to get with whoever she wants. Yeah. And do you know what? Good on Sean Ray. No, nah, 100%. I think like, let's talk about... And also, he's a good looking bloke. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah he's, he's yeah, really, yeah, yeah. really good looking. Like, do you know what I mean? She's not settled. She's with like a... Hopefully, a nice guy. Yeah. He's good looking and that's great. You know yeah. what? Let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt because yeah. I don't really know and I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt because obviously that's a nicer solution in this situation. Definitely. Dan, if you're listening, because, you know, he probably he is. most certainly is. Yeah, obviously. of course, of course, of course. <laughs> he is as certainly listening as Twitter is fact. It's very, very, yeah. Anyway, mm. <laughs> um, mate, like, good on you if you are doing the right thing because, like, obviously... You're seeing her for the right reasons. Um, you're seeing her for her strength. And 100% she is strong. Like, I can't imagine life being easy so when tough. you're in that situation. So, I don't know. Good on you. And you know what, Shauna? Good on you too, man. Yeah. Like, you're, well, you're doing so. your thing. And uh, no, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for both of you. If it is as, as it looks. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. It's a sticky one. I've actually got, like, a, a side question from you. Go on. From me. For you. For me. If, I think it's something you said, like, about people who've got disabilities. Go on. Like, oh, are they just supposed to fancy people, other people with the same disabilities? Mm. And it's like, obviously not. What do you think of, like, shows like Undateables? Have you seen it? Do you know what? They've not got disabilities, though, have they? Some of them have. I've not seen this show. So, not really? disability. They- well, not disabilities. Uh, some of them have got, like... Well, actually, some of them have like- got disabilities. I think there's some... There was someone who's got like I don't know how would you define a disability? Um, a disability is any diagnosed um, is it disorders? So I think there was someone who had like scoliosis, so like really really curved back. There's some people yeah, with Down's, I'd say that counts as a, as a disability. People with yeah. like Down syndrome, would you say yeah, it's a disability? Yeah, 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 so yeah. That, that, like there's people with Down syndrome on the show, really? people with scoliosis, okay. um, people with autism on the show. Um, yeah. I, I actually I've not seen this show. So, I think that sounds that sounds horrible. So for context, for those who don't know what yeah. the Undateables is, it's basically a show full of people who have, as I said, got these maybe physical, mental disabilities, yeah. um, such as, or like our uh, neurodiverse, I should also say. Mm-hmm. It's a range of things, and they go on this show called The Undateables, where they basically date people who are kind of within a... Some of the the others are also undateables, oh, wow. as in have also got like disabilities, physical, mental, okay. or uh, or um, neurodiverse. I think some are like just I, I don't want to say reg like regular people, but who don't have disabilities yeah. and are yeah, aren't yeah. neurodiverse, yeah. right? And they basically just go on the show and they show them like dating different people and like they show relationships progressing and stuff like that. I don't know how I feel about it actually. It, I've not seen it. But from the description you've just given, yeah, sounds exploitative as fuck. It is, man. It is exploitative and like, as fuck. And it's like, oh, let's just group all these people together because they've got disabilities. That's yeah. wrong. It's essentially that is so wrong. It's essentially like the TV, like production is trying to create like a freak show. 
Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's, it's a modern day. Yeah, that is you've you've hit it on, you hit the nail on Thank the head. There. It is a modern day version of a freak show. And like, which is really wrong because these are like just. I'm not saying that they're, they're freaks. No, but exactly. More, that's what I, but more in the sense of like, it's using people who have disabilities and basically making entertainment at their expense. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. making entertainment out of them, and I, I think that's I think that's wrong. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? It is quite a wholesome show. Like when they do find people, okay. and I guess it does help people find people. Are there any like proper like? long-lasting relationships yeah that, that have been really? and, and the relationships are probably different to what like other people's relationships are yeah um so on the one hand it's wholesome but i know that not everyone watches it for wholesome content and some people yeah. watch it for a bit of a to laugh. laugh at it yeah yeah which is mm. which is feels wrong it feels wrong and also it's on like channel four i think which is Wait, like channel says a four? lot love the fucking twisted shows yeah yeah, yeah. did you see, have you sorry this is a bit of a side go for right? it did you see, I saw this TikTok the other day, uh, and it was basically, I can't remember the name, oh, it's really good noise, what's the name of the show, but basically it was in 2000, in the early 2000s, Channel 4 made a show, right, where basically they put all the contestants in a house, right, and they basically, the, whole, the aim of the game was to last as long as possible without sleeping. And if you, oh, I saw the and day, if, you fell, if you fell asleep, you were kicked out, right, and then they used to do challenges, right, so like, for example, they'd put them all on a bed in a dark room, and they'd play like noises that would designed to make you fall asleep and these guys have been like 150 hours without any sleep and they're literally there trying to stay awake for as long as possible and um apparently like there was but, like if that was made today the off off con would be going off so one you... person survived right survived he... <laughs> no the reason i say that is yeah. because there was a whole thing with the russian sleep experiment and mm. like a lack of sleep is really bad it's for you, and it can be fatal. yeah, it's, yeah. All, it's torture it's literally yeah, a form yeah, of torture it is. and channel four fucking broadcasted that i think like it's, it's so crazy because in a way like i'm the celebrity get me out there it's kind of like torture as well is, and the thing is, the difference is between torture and reality TV is that they, they've volunteered to go on. They've they volunteered. Know exactly what you, um, you've got the chance to get out of it when you want, but it's crazy how many people have a price, right? Everyone's got a price for something. What would be your price to go on I'm a Celeb? To go on I'm a Celeb. Already, let's say you're already famous, and you know, like, come on, man, like. You didn't. You didn't need the profile boost just to do it. Let's say it wasn't televised, but you go on. Oh, uh, so I'm, I'm not a doing up a Matt Hancock. Yeah, you're not doing up a. Oh, I've got something. To yeah, sorry. Okay, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's mad. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a hard question, man. I think like, I think I could do the whole sleeping outside camping thing quite. I'd love it. Love. Yeah, I, I think it. I'd be quite cool, like good at that. I, I do like camping. Um, as you know, I did one of my birthdays camping. Yeah, that was really fun like, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think the whole eating bugs, live bugs mm. and stuff, I think I'd struggle with the eating challenges. And I hate, I fucking hate spiders. I hate spiders. See, for me, it's snakes. Snakes? Fuck snakes. What? Mate, I do not trust, I, do, they, I don't nah, trust them. Snakes are calm, No, man. no, honestly, I'd rather that literally sleep in tarantulas than snakes. Really? Dude, it's the way they move. They are natural. Mate, I don't trust things with no legs, man. Honestly, they're disgusting. Spiders. But it's just like, oh. like so like bloop. yeah. I, for me, I actually wouldn't mind the eating stuff. Obviously, it would be horrible. Yeah, but like you just sort of get on with it. You eat it, you swallow it, and then it's done. But like sitting there with snakes crawling over you is that I, what your I, girlfriend I, says to you? <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry. <laughs> sitting there with snakes all over you. I would honestly, I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. Genuinely, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, that's not that deep. That's right. To be yeah. <laughs> what? I'd rather shit in your hands than clap than fucking. Of course. Obviously, you can yeah. wash your hands. Um, <laughs> How do we no, get onto this? Yeah, I don't know, but okay, price. Yeah, what's I don't know, price? at this current stage, and I, hopefully this price would go up as I like <laughs> progress in life. I'd be but, like a tenner. <laughs> nah, not a tenner. <laughs> With my bank account, <laughs> I'd do it for a hundred bags. Hundred grand. Yeah, I reckon so. I'd, mate, I'd do it for less. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do twenty k. Nah, it's like a holiday, like a sort of slightly twisted holiday. I'd love it. Twenty k. All right, 30. <laughs> I'll do it if you do it. <laughs> now, yeah, if I was going in with someone I knew, I reckon I could do it for less. Yeah. Maybe, you know what? I'll settle. Money on the table right now. You're going to I'm a Celebrity. You can keep your job and everything will work out yeah. fine when you come out. I'd like Matt Hancock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd do it. Matt Hancock, though. Let's just quickly, quick sidebar. Yeah, let's quickly, do, let's quickly get into this. Let's quickly, quick sidebar. Man, waste man. Said it before and I'll say it again. And yeah. to think Absolute he won the hearts of the British public. Not us. We saw through that. 
We did okay. actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've had discussions on this and we saw through it. But Wasteland, he gave a poxy 10k of his 330k. Absolute fucking That's what? outrage. That's what? 3% or... Of his, and he said beforehand he is going to give Donated a sizable donation to charity, right? Now, 10k is arguably a sizable donation. But it's not about the it's quantity. It's not about the quantity. It's about the proportion. It's about the, the, proportion. Yeah. It's about the proportion. And the amount of outrage and upset that he calls the British public for going on that show after a pandemic and the way he handled it, right? And then the only benefit of this is to give 10k, like what was it, 3%? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Now, he's an arsehole, like, man. He's actually an arsehole. Did you see him being interviewed? I think yeah. It was on this morning. And the way he tried to, like, the way he tried to slither it. out of there, he was like, So why only 10K? And he was like, They're both and he's great like, charities. He's like, oh, you know, they're both great charities. And then um, I come with the interviewer, and he was just like, No, answer the question. Why only 10K? I'm talking about the figure, not the charities. And you could just see him. He's a slippery, slippery guy. He's a snake. He? He's, a, he's a snake, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be like. He's a snake. He's a snake with arms and legs. Right. Now, he is, man. Like, don't do that shit. Like, don't yeah. don't lie. Like, I I wouldn't have cared if he kept the money. It's the fact that he said he was going to do something and then didn't. At that point, don't even donate. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, he could have even yeah. given, like, a little bit more. Like, if he gave 100k, half. Like, people yeah. would be fine with it. But even 100k, I reckon, that's yeah. fine as well. But 3%, yeah, nothing. Ten, 10k doesn't even touch the sides. No. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's pocket money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Nah, waste, man. But, oh. We were talking about Sean and Ray. Yes. And talking yeah, about yeah. Undateable. I don't know how we... Like, hey, we that, that was a big tangent. That was a big tangent. These are the log in the life conversations we're oh, talking it. about. <laughs> but yeah. In summary, I hope you're both happy. Um, big up Sean and Ray. Big up Sean Glad Ray. you're happy. Yeah. Big up this guy too, as long as he's he not is. a pedo. Yeah. But check his search history. Check it. Check it. Vet the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it. <laughs> check his hard drives. 100%. <laughs> like... You know, Everything. make sure he wasn't on Epstein Island. Like, yeah, you've got to all just check that. all this stuff. All the checks. Because it's important. But, um, swiftly moving on. on. Uh, slightly lighter note. Go on. Bro? I'm going to talk about Snoop Doggy Dog. D O double G. D O double G. <laughs> Fam? He released a nursery rhyme. I saw this. Album. I saw this. And it's called, it's a, it's a series called Doggy Land. Kid songs and nursery rhymes. So, for those, those what's your doggy land? Doggy land. What is it with all these celebrities who like do these lands? Like, what is it? So, Michael Jackson had Neverland, Astroland, Astro, no, that's Astro, world, Astro world, world. Yeah. and the do- oh doggy my land. God. <laughs> and now uh, he's a jokes guy, man. But for those of you who don't know, Snoop Dogg, um, Snoop Dogg's this fifty-one-year-old rapper. Started out in the '90s, and he's kind of like—I guess you could say—he's a gangster rapper. He's one of the most famous rappers. One of in the, the most world, famous like, rappers. Yeah. Um, done like, yeah, gangster rap, hip hop. He was actually a gang member as well. He was a member of the Crips yep. uh, in California, and uh, yeah, like he's had so many bangers. I'm sure, like a lot of you would know them. So, what's he had? He's just had like sipping on gin and juice. Mm. Baby. I got my mind on my money, my money on my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, of course, you had the snoop. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. When the PM's trying to and <laughs> <laughs> he's got the classics. Yeah, what I mean? like, Young, Wild, and Free. This guy's had bangers. He sold over thirty million albums worldwide. And if that wasn't enough, he's also gone and done loads of films. He's had a few films. He's had a few cameos. And now he's gone and fucking. Where, where do you go from there? I guess you just drop nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, man. First. So here's what I was thinking. Go on. Yeah. Give me, give me your two cents. Uh, <laughs> at first, when I found out, I was like. This guy's obviously run out of money. <laughs> no, you think it's a money thing? No, no, at first. At okay, first, yeah, I was yeah. like, this guy's obviously run out of money. Why Why would he do this? Why would he do this? Why would he do I've this? I've got an answer. No, so, same. Okay, but, sorry, I'll let you finish. But this is what I'm saying, yeah? Okay. Why? Because it just felt weird, yeah? This yeah. is it. This, the reason I emphasise the fact that he was a Crips member, yeah, is because can you imagine many gang members who fucking think, oh, we're going to take it back what? to the nursery? Do you know what, yeah? Nursery rhymes. That's what the streets need. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. imagine he goes, <laughs> You know what the streets are missing, mate? They need that nursery rhyme. <laughs> 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 
We gonna be spitting nursery with the O double G. Okay. <laughs> I'll carry on. Yeah. So um, bewildering, but Snoop Doggy Dog, you're a G man. You're a G. You're a G. I mean, listen. I don't know if you listen to it. I listen to it. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I listen to it. I listen you listen to the whole front to back. No, nah, no, of course not. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I listened to some of it. Though. Okay. Was it was it good? Um, I love it. I love the idea. Listen. Was it okay? Are any of them gonna be to on your rotation? No, nah, of course <laughs> not, bro. Of course. However, maybe, and I'll go into a bit okay. more detail. But listen, I listened to some of it and I can't lie, Snoop, you fucking smashed it, man. It's really, really cool. I love the idea of reinventing nursery rhymes. If you think about it, mm. all of us have kind of had the same nursery rhymes. And let's be honest, they're a bit like dead. Dead. Even for parents. Like, Barbar parents... Black Sheep, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Did she fuck? <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, did she have a lamb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little scat. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, but like, no. Nah, so this is what I'm saying for parents. It's probably super repetitive. One really cool thing is he's literally done nursery rhymes over fucking hip hop and trap. He's getting man. young kids into hip hop exactly. from an early age. I, I love, love it. it. If you want right. your kids to get into music, this that's the kind the of thing you should play. If you love hip hop music, mm. obviously one of the concerns about playing hip hop around your kids is like the fact that you don't want them to be influenced. You can't by play like, actual Snoop Dogg where he raps about you know. Smacking no. a bitch. Like, that's, the <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> that's the thing. But I heard it and I sent it to my nephew, who nephew? is one. And I sent it to his parents, actually, not him. Um, I sent it to his parents. Did he like, yo, that's kind of fire <laughs> for real? <laughs> yeah, that shit's dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, you, uh, so, yeah, I sent it to his mum and dad because his, uh, his dad loves hip hop. Okay. He used to like old school hip hop. So I understand, like, obviously, they're playing, like, these kiddie tunes for him at the moment. How do you get him into hip hop? I would also be concerned about playing DMX's intro to my kids and just hearing DMX just fucking growl. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, um, nah, so sent it and they're going to play it for him. And I can't lie, the beats are kind of hard. Really? The beats are kind of hard. They did a bit of like um, the wheels on the bus. It starts with him rapping. And uh, then it gets onto you know, other stuff. And Snoop's actually spoke, spoken about it. And he said he always wanted to create a kid-friendly series that lets kids be kids and is truly representative of the culture and everything in everything or with everything rather from the music the that characters is so wholesome it's true though that warms it's my true. heart yeah same I, I'm gonna play that to my kids <laughs> <laughs> and their yeah. kids will play it to their kids <laughs> but it's just like I, I can't that. lie it's fucking hilarious as well because obviously if you know Snoop you hear him smoke like talking about smoking up in the White mm. House um, the guy is just at this point I think what I love about him is that he's he knows, I think he's fully self-aware, unlike a lot of rappers, mm. he's fully self-aware that he's past his prime. <laughs> his greatest work is behind him, right? And he knows that. He did his best work in the 90s, and that's cool, right? And now, he's just doing everything. He's just doing up like, side doing quests. Doing all the side quests. You've never seen a meme of all the side quests, and it's just pictures of like Snoop Dogg in like, different random locations, right? So, I've got a theory about this. Okay. I've got, I've got a theory about Snoop Dogg. And I think... He just, I think he just is afraid to say no. <laughs> so I think like, oh, he's one of the most, the biggest rappers in the world, right? I reckon his agent gets a million requests a day, right? And he just calls up Snoop Dogg. He's just like, <sighs> and his agent's like, right, so um, we've got, you know, we've got a Just Eat advert. We've got a gospel album, a nursery album, and also an opportunity for you to go on um, WWE wrestling. Um, which one would you like to do? And then Snoop Dogg's just like, <sighs> shit, man. I just... <laughs> I would just do all of it. <laughs> and this is why we see him. He just doesn't, doesn't want to say no. Do you know what I mean? Mate, he's been in Bollywood. Mate, he's in everything. Yeah. Like, do you know what? I've got a list here, actually, of all the stuff he's done, right? So, a cooking show with Martha Stewart. Right? <laughs> he formed he formed his own football league called the Snoop, the Snoop Youth Football League, right? Um, he devoted himself to the Rast... You remember, might remember this one. He devoted himself to the Rastafari religion yeah. and renamed himself Snoop Lion, right? <laughs> I think he, he dropped that after a while, didn't he? Um, he made a gospel album. He ventured into Bollywood music. He entered the ring on WWE, right? I didn't Have even you know not that. seen the clip of that? No. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, and lastly, he narrates his own nature documentary. He just He's just doing stuff. Do you know what I mean? He's just doing all of it. And I love it. Like, the guy's what, like 50 plus? Yeah. And he just 51. Thinks, fuck it. In, my, he's, in his last sort of, you know, back half of his life, 
I'm just going to say yes to fucking everything. <laughs> He's everywhere. Yeah, it's true. Sorry, I'm just thinking about <laughs> this time where he was on one of the Comedy Central roasts. Mm. And, so, and someone's yeah, yeah is that we're about, yeah go on <laughs> and he just starts the show and he's just like i don't know about everyone else but i've been smoking i've been drinking i'm feeling pretty good about myself and i was just like <laughs> bet you are snoop no yeah, but something so funny that someone said was that he look snoop looks like shack skeleton <laughs> <laughs> that is savage oh, that he's is so savage. skinny he's actually crazy skinny but um, do you reckon like he's ever been not high do you reckon that, like, they, do you reckon, like, do you ever, like, I wonder what you go, what, what happens to him if he doesn't smoke weed? So, here's, yeah, I've actually got a theory about this as well. Not about Snoop specifically, but about yeah. weed, and weed smokers. Um, I think on the whole, it's not like, people can't do it all the time. It's not like, for them. Yeah. Like they can't, it makes people lazy, uh, unproductive, potentially really, like, anxious as well, all of that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, like, just like some people need medication mm -hmm. to function to function yeah. yeah so for example i think people with adhd they like if they take ritalin helps with focus but if other people take ritalin it's kind of more of like a you can go a bit like yeah a wall mm -hmm. um i think similarly some people weed genuinely it's good for them really i know that sounds wild well they're more productive yeah i really? think like it could potentially I think so. Think about mm. it. Like, it, like deep it. Like, if some people need medication, then surely some people need weed. Get, yeah, in theory. Yeah. Like, and it's just not like a thing. Mm. So, people like Snoop. He's clearly a productive guy. Yeah. As, <laughs> hey, <laughs> gospel album, yeah. <laughs> nursery album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trust. But, um, but now, nah, man. But in response to what you were saying about mm. how, like, he don't think he can say no. I reckon he probably can. He, but as you said, he probably gets a million requests a day. And he says yes to all yeah, of them. <laughs> but listen, yeah. Bro, one thing I've noticed about even like rich celebs and mm. shit like that, you know, you see like entrepreneurial characters, for example, yeah. in society. You also see it in celebrities. Like Shaq is, Shaq is like a massive entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, he's invested in loads of different stuff. Didn't he invest in Ring Doorbell? Do I make that up? I don't know, actually. I think, really? I think he did. I think he did. I think he did. He's got a crazy Interesting. investment portfolio. Um and he's super entrepreneurial as well. And there's so many other like celebs who've started their own businesses and side quests and stuff, I guess you could say. And it's like, where does the desire from all of that come from? Getting super rich, sure. Being super influential is probably one of them. Now, Snoop, as you said, had his like peak rap career yeah. in the 90s. 90s early noughties, but one, yeah. as you said, I rate the fact that he fucking knows that about himself. I rate he's the fact that he's self-aware. Mm. And he's thinking, how do I stay influential? And he's gone and done all of this stuff, put his fingers in loads yeah. of different pies. Love it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think like, unlike Eminem, for example, mm. who I think should have retired. You think so? 10, 15 years ago. Okay. He should have recovered. Uh, he should have retired after the recovery album, I think. Because he just keep rapping and everyone's there being like, it's like an old man just like rapping and trying to stay relevant. And like, even though, even his core fans don't like his music. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think good, good on Snoop Dogg. I love it. Bring oh, hip hop to man. the to the younger ages. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would look if, when you guys have kids. I'd really recommend like showing it to them um, because it's cool. It's nice, and if you want to get to get your kids into hip hop in a mm. probably ethical way, go for it. Um, sorry, Rory, to go Yo. back. Something you said about Eminem. Oh, I think it's quite interesting what you said that he's still rapping and stuff yeah. because I think we've had this conversation before about like musicians, mm. rappers. So the first album. It's usually about people's lives, right? So in the cases of a lot of rappers, it might be about hardship growing up, maybe talking about yep. gangs, streets, mm -hmm. dealing drugs, stuff like that. Um, it's all their life experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. in one album. And yeah. I guess like what for a lot of other artists, it might be about heartbreak. Again, hardships of coming, growing up and stuff like that. And then you do that first album and it pops. Yes. You got your peas. You're not in hardships as much anymore. Mm -hmm. You've got multiple people who want to date you. You've got unlimited access to booze, like drugs, drinks, drugs whatever, food. So then you do a second album. Mm. And what's it about? It's about partying. It's about the success. It's about the success from your first album. It's about getting you lit. About just being on tour and yeah. 
Don't you eventually run out of stories after living a life like that? Like, yeah. it's one true, thing man. about like artists is like a lot of them have come from like kind of shit times. Mm-hmm. Artists of all types, and I kind of think why? Well, because they've got stories to tell. I also think the hardship probably makes you more motivated to try and get out. And Definitely. maybe you haven't got the infrastructure of a backup. That like so it's like the, the, this either from, succeeds or, I, or it's, yeah. it's all or nothing literally. Yeah, got nothing to lose. And um, you know you only hear the success stories as well. There's loads of yes. like way more people I'm sure who I'm don't sure. make it, but um, they've got stories to tell as well. You know, but that's what I'm saying. Like someone like Eminem, what's he rapping about now? Or what's he? I don't actually know. Yeah, you know he's like it's a weird one with Eminem because I feel like. His music was great, and I think that was when he was on like loads of drugs, and he was crazy, and he was a little bit unhinged, and he was it was when he was younger, right? Yeah. But I think I feel like when you, what he's now he's probably over fifty years old now. But when he got older, he sort of went the more serious route. But people liked him because he was eccentric and because he was, you know, out there with these really shocking, quite vile songs, but quite funny as well. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like as he's got older, now he's recently, and he's like he's trying to get back to that as well. And I just feel like he comes across like really forced and really corny. And I just think he needs to just put yeah. to bed, man. No, as in... And even his, even his, I don't know if you like, have noticed, but like his flow back when he was, his older albums, it was like, he was, he's always been a really good lyricist, but his flow was sort of like effortless. And it felt like he wasn't trying. And those new stuff, he sounds like he's rapping like a robot. It's like, everything's like really stiff. Like he's just like rapping like he's got a rod up his ass or oh, That's a really good impression. Do you know what I mean? But every, every song is the same. Like he just raps really quickly yeah. and really robotically, mm. but not really saying anything great. And you, it's just like, okay, yeah, this is impressive, but like, it's not, it doesn't make a good song. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Eminem needs to, well, he should have retired 10 years yeah. ago. I don't know, man. Uh, the thing is, fair enough. As you said, if his core fans don't like him, then fair. But if it's still making money and he still loves music, then why not? Like, why would you retire yeah. if you love doing something? Um, or to protect your legacy. Okay, that's Because if you look at his discography... Yeah, right? fine. Like, do you think if, theoretically, Eminem had died had, had died in the early noughties, he'd be heralded as one of like, the greatest Probably. rappers with the best discographies Probably, ever? Probably, actually. The same way Biggie, the same way Tupac does, right? Yeah. Um, but now he's gone on too long, and he's made some shit you projects which people... he's tarnished his legacy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't think, like... Well, not people, in terms of... People are always going to think, oh, he's, he's an incredible... He, he's obviously the biggest selling rapper of all time is he? yeah he is and obviously people think he's a great rapper but I'm saying there's a certain art to protecting your your discography and your Fair. legacy because that's what you're remembered for you're remembered for all the, the music that you released yeah. it's the same with um, Andre 3000 um, who's from Outkast yeah, 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 yeah he does the odd feature now but he's not released music in, in decades yeah. right because he thinks I've got nothing else to say I like the albums I've got. I don't want to force it, and I, I think there's, I respect that. Yeah, you're right. And he comes in a few features, and he makes bangers. What was that? What was that song? He did the song on Channel Orange. Um, yes, I know the one. I think it was. It might have been Blonde, wasn't it? Um, it was. Oh, what's really going on me now? Was it Pink and White? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, one sec. Yeah, let me look yeah. it up quickly. It was Solo. Solo, Solo reprise. Oh, and he did Pink, oh, Pink Matter. Pink that's Matter. a banger. I forgot about that song. Yes. That's Pink that's a, that's a, Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wow. Yeah, like he, he's protecting his discography, but mm. he slides it on features and he yeah. delivers a great performance. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm. Then you've also got other people who've just stayed consistently like super relevant. Like, like an example? Like Bruno Mars? Anderson Pack? Anderson Pack, I'd agree. But Anderson Pack's only been going since like... But Bruno Mars is still like fucking ridiculously successful as well. He's successful. I don't know if he's like... Yeah, but he's not regarded as one of the best musicians. Yeah, ever. exactly. But then he... I actually... Okay, here's a controvert. Okay, he's got 56 million wow. listeners. Yeah. He's mainstream as fuck. But Bruno Mars is so fucking talented, man. Oh, he is, yeah. Like, he's, he's multi... like Do instrumentalist. You think he's In terms of, like, what people perceive him as? Yeah, there's some songs by him which are... Bops. Bangers. Mm. Bangers. What's that song which is like... Run, run, run away, run away, baby, before I put my smile on you... I should have known that song. <laughs> oh, and then he did the lazy song as well, Banger. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Um, what is it? I mean, some of these are not, mm. like, that incredible. Uh, yeah, some of them are, like, super poppy. Grenade. Do you ever remember when Grenade I came out? I throw a grenade for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> throw a grenade. I'd throw a grenade for most people. <laughs> Fun. Um, yeah, but anyways, sorry, going back to Snoop. Snoop. Keep doing your thing, man. You're yeah, actually smashing it. I, wonder, yeah. I can't wait to see what he's going to do next, you know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You might think, like, go to... I wouldn't be surprised 
if next thing we find out, he's a fucking opera singer. Can you imagine? I wouldn't be surprised if like he's the first one to go to Mars for like Elon Musk. <laughs> He's like the planet's representative. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first first celebrity in uh, in space. Nah, wait, have you ever seen? Have you seen? Um, what is it? Um, Don't look up. Yes, yeah, so you know yeah. You've got that guy who's like going in the rocket to like go like fuck up the asteroid. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and the US is just like, oh, we always need a hero. You need a hero. Yeah. I reckon Snoop would be that hero. <laughs> <laughs> just like in the rocket, just like <laughs> T minus ten. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> <laughs> your double G in space, mate. I'm spaced out, bro. <laughs> what accent was that? Yeah, I don't know, man. Country, I don't know. Snoop, you're a legend, man. You're a legend. We love it. Um, but cool, bro. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to kind of talk about in terms Come of on. what's been going on in the news this week. Can I talk about one thing, yeah, real quick? Yeah, and it's a quick recommendation, right? Oh, do it very, very quickly. Um, so in the weekend, I saw Babylon. You know, I mentioned oh the last my episode. Oh my god, you didn't even have a catch up, man. Um, so I saw Babylon. Um, very quick uh, rundown of it. It's basically has Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, mm. set in the 1920s Hollywood. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's set in a very debaucherous. It's a time of excess and glam, and and it's yeah, it's pretty. It's it's very Wolf of Wall Street esque, right? Wow. Okay. Um, so it's basically set in a time where there's a big transition from um, Hollywood, where they were silent films, um, to what we know as talkies, right? Where Basically, actors had to actually now act, right? Okay. And basically, this big time of transition where loads of actors lost their job because actually, for the first time, they don't just have to be good looking; they've got to actually act, right? Was so, that what it was before? They were just being based on appearance. They'd be acting, right? We were black and white and stuff, and they would cut, and it would basically be like subtitles of what they've just said, and then it would go on to the next next video. Right. It's been so dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Um, but dude, this film, right? I, I want to talk about it on the pod, right? Because this film shocked me. Fucking shocked me. So was it that good? So it looked like it was one of the, from the trailer, it looked like a mix of Wolf of Wall Street and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It looked like quite energetic and fun and pretty like, you know, R-rated stuff, right? So this film starts, mm. mate, this film makes Wolf of Wall Street look like fucking Teletubbies. <laughs> Dude, this film is vulgar, right? Oh, vulgar, yeah. Vulgar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the first half an hour, it's this whole party scene, right? Bro, boobs everywhere. Cocaine sniffed every like sixty seconds. It is frenetic. Like I shit you not, right? Shit, man. Right in the first three minutes, an elephant shits on the screen. <laughs> literally shits into the camera. Well, like, literally, literally like poos on the camera because they're trying to get an elephant for this party. And it's this, this like frenetic. Like the film starts off and it's eleven out of ten, and you're there like fucking hell. What do I look at? And every single bit of the frame is just filled with like it sounds the, chaotic. Yeah, it's fucking chaos, right? And you're kind of like you're into it, and you're just like whoa, like this is a lot. Right? But the film is three hours and ten minutes, right? Okay. And the film was at 11, and it didn't stop being at 11, right? It was, this was one of the most exhausting ex- cinema experiences of my entire life. And I'm kind of, it was weird, right? Because it, it, it covered all these different characters and these different moments and these big parties. And it's like Margot Robbie has a fight with a rattlesnake. It is just fucking like bizarre. All these like crazy bizarre scenes that on their own are really entertaining. But my problem with, with it was just, it all just came across and by the time it ended, you're just like, what was even the point of the film? Oh. You weren't really invested in the characters. Okay. And it was a really well-made film. Like the camera work was great. The performances are great. Like everything was great in that regard, but just in terms of the story, mm. properly lacking. Like it was just, I mean, it was too much. And okay. I did when, when you have three hours of that. Yeah. I'm interested. I think you should, when it comes to streaming, watch it. Cause I'm very interested. So? Three opinion. hours and 10 minutes. So yeah, I'd want to watch it and it's worth my time for that. It's a commitment. I, it's been very it's been, I think probably been the most divisive film yeah. of the year like some people say it's one of the best of the year some people are saying it's, it's one of the worst it's what you were saying to me right so yeah. it's, it's, it's a really it's it's interesting like the sort of the time period and stuff mm. after a while all the vulgarity and the debauchery and the excess and it just got quite tiresome I think yeah. Um, but yeah I'd be let, let us know what you thought of Babylon in the comments um, yeah. yeah did you think it was as tiresome as I did mm. but yeah mm. nice, got, what's, our, what's our next Keep segment so Rory I had something I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. I thought we'd shake things off a little bit. <clears throat> New segment unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> We're upgrading. <laughs> this is this is our equivalent of buying a new skin on Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Rory, it's time to unlock the new segment. Go on. Are you ready? Hit me. It's time for a would you rather. Oh, oh dear. 
Uh, I'm excited for this. Yeah, man. So, um, some of you might have seen, we put in our uh, story today on Instagram. So, make sure you go follow us on, follow us on Instagram. Shameless plug. Login in life <laughs> underscore LTL. Llama Tango uh, Llama. Llama. <laughs> I almost said hang <laughs> <laughs> Nah, so we uh, put it in my story. I wanted to hear some of your guys' most outrageous would you would you rather's. I wanted to hear like the nastiest ones, okay. just the most ridiculous ones. And I'd actually messaged Rory to say, don't check Instagram. Yeah. I want to catch you out of guard. <laughs> and some of them were just genuinely too much to, to say. Right, like, right. I'm not trying to get cancelled. I think I've done that every episode. <laughs> It's a running theme here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to get cancelled. Uh, some of them were outrageous, but thank you very much for submitting what they were. But Rory, the one I've got for you today says thank you very much for um, submitting this one. Um, this one is great, and I like it. Cool. And I've actually had some time to think about it. Right. But I still don't know what my answer would be. <laughs> no fucking hell. Rory? <laughs> Go on. Would you rather have fingers for nipples or nipples for fingers? <laughs> Sorry, say it again. Would you rather, for the people at the back, would you rather have fingers for nipples or nipples for fingers? Fingers for nipples. Okay, so my nipples would be like long fingers, <laughs> yeah. right? Which some people probably do have. Just <laughs> right. So, or I've got little stubs. Basically, I've got little nipples on my on my fingers. Yeah. Oh, I think that's an obvious no, that, answer. Do you know what? I That's think there is an obvious one. I thought you'd, this would be challenging. Okay, fine. Hands down, I'd have... Um... <laughs> fingers for nipples. No! I'd have nipples for fingers. No. For, yeah, fingers for nipples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the thing is, right, you just tie them up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, oh! I know, that's a horrid image, but they're drooping, right? You can't, they're fingers. Oh, yeah, shit. They're not finger-looking nipples. <laughs> for some reason, when you said that, I was just thinking really long nipples. No, you're just... <laughs> Oh, that's that's a t- that's they're not like droopy nips, oh, bro. They're fingers, man. Okay, so like, I'm like this, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Think about you the dexterity. I would just wear very thick jumpers, so that like, you know, if I was wearing a t-shirt right now, like, you could see that shit. That would, it would cause some questions, <laughs> you know. So now I would, I'd still go for that because you need your you need your fingers for everything. You never find a wife. I just keep my jumper on all the time, <laughs> like. All the, even even when we're in bed together, just jump it on all the time. She'd be like, but baby, it's so hot in here. Take off your jumper. Nah, baby, you can't do that. I'm just you like, haven't seen what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine when it gets cold. Oh, no. <laughs> Bro, January UK, you're fucked. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> nah. It's got to be. Is, it's, that, is your chest all right? <laughs> <laughs> just there like this. <laughs> oh Imagine when you got to pump at the gym after you like doing chest. <laughs> oh my god, that's so true. Actually, you, you couldn't do. You have to skip chest day. You actually have to. Oh my god, I, st- I, st- I, my, I stand by my decision though. I would, I would keep my fingers. Like nipples for fingers, <laughs> bro. You just can't. You need your fingers for stuff. Yeah, like, like, you can't eat. Yeah, it'd be tough. It'd be tough. Like you can't hold anything. Yeah, I think mean, that's yeah. That's, right, let me shake it up slightly. You'd still have your thumbs. Okay. But the rest of your oh. fingers would be nipples. You still can't still do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> just having a thumb on each hand. It's not going to run back. I can suddenly use a knife and fork. <laughs> like, you couldn't use your phone. You couldn't you use should, your... You'd use just, yeah, just... well, If you had nipples. Yeah, but you had your thumb, wouldn't you? So... Yeah, fine, without <laughs> the thumb. Yeah, so. I think... I think, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely go for the... <laughs> finger titty, the finger nips, the finger nips, finger nips. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I'd have to go for the same. If yeah. any of you have any compelling arguments as to why you would go for, we'd love to hear fingers. that. Actually, I'd love yeah, to hear yeah, the yeah, argument yeah, yeah. for um, nipple fingers. I think, yeah, I'd definitely go for finger nips. Finger yeah, nips. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think like away. easy. The only benefit would maybe be like <laughs> I can't believe you're justifying this. Uh, breastfeeding. <laughs> what is just easier for the baby? And for you, like probably less tender, you can keep. You could switch. Feet. No, you're not. But also, it wouldn't be attached to a breast, so there wouldn't be milk coming out. <laughs> but, no. but I also feel like maybe I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Should we move on to the yeah, next? Yeah, yeah, okay. nah, no, that was it for the would you would you rather this week? Okay, I'm gonna have some more for you. It's gonna be a new one each week. Yeah, I like this. They're gonna, be more, like gonna like be more outrageous. They're gonna be more outrageous. But guys, if you have any other would you rather's. Please send them in. Um, you know, we're, we're, 
We want to hear them. We yeah, want to discuss them. I, I like the idea of them just getting progressively more fucked. I've got some, the which I, there was one that I thought of, and I was like, I can't ask this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we need to be making some money first, mm. because I will lose my job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that I could potentially... End, end it's just not worth the risk. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, I see that. There's no way in hell I could keep my job after saying what I wanted to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so out of pocket. But anyways, yeah, guys, that's been episode four of Vlogging Than Life. Thank you so much for listening and bearing with the technical difficulties. We're going to try to avoid that next time. But uh, anyways, thank you so much for being here. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to us. Follow us on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us at Log Than Life underscore LTL. Lama Tango Lambo. <laughs> smooth cold cold <laughs> we're getting better at this <laughs> but now guys thank you very much we'll see you on episode five peace out